Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 6. Today we're going to be looking at learning objects. So I'm going to quickly go over some how to look up things in Google, it's video libraries, what are learning objects and some gamification. So Google is actually tailored to incorporate the computer you're on, the country you're in and the environment you're looking at. So I'm just going to give you some examples of Google Advanced Search. So let's switch across to my in this case, I'm going to be using Safari. Bring it up. So if we go to Google, just normal Google, and I want to go to advanced search. So you can either look this up or just look it up. Advanced Google search, there we go. All right, and I'll go here. Now, advanced Google search, really, really handy. You may already know about this stuff, so I apologize. But so I'm going to look for, oh, I don't know, um, uh, I want to talk about ICT education and I want to, so I want the ICT and education but down here I can go down and look at for language site with domain for surface.edu and even better any for, format change this to PowerPoint and go advanced search and this will bring up just ICT in education and notice they're all PowerPoints if you do the same thing just ICT in education PowerPoint, you see it comes up with all different ones. So PowerPoint's embedded within it. Um, so the other thing you can look for instead of it says file type, the other thing you look for is SWF, which is a shockwave file. These are normally interactive, interactive games, so web based, right? and a lot of them will be games you can play. And we'll get into that later on anyway. All right. Um, so you can do a search for file type for the date or for the domain. Video libraries. Now there is a huge amount of video libraries that you can go into. YouTube is the most common one. If you're going to go onto YouTube, one thing you might want to do is set up a YouTube account. If you've already got a Google account, then you can set up a, Google, uh, a YouTube account automatically. Um, if you have your own channel or playlist, then you can ask your school to unblock that just that playlist. So I would have to get my school to unblock the, my um, my students' playlist or Johnson Labs playlist. However, TeacherTube is a different alternative. TeacherTube is uh, videos that have been checked to make sure they're okay, uh, and quite often it's not blocked by schools. Teacher TV is another uh, another good example. Comes out of Britain um, and originally, and there's lots of good stuff on that. But now there's an AU version. TED is a really cool uh, suite of videos, um, and I'll bring that one up. Um, TED originally started in 1984 as for technology, entertainment and design and every year there used to be a conference and this conference is huge, it's, it's a thousand bucks to go uh, for the day and it, they have major uh, people come and sit, like you have Bill Gates, um, Obama, whoever, sitting in the front seats. So huge, huge environment um, and they also do TEDx now where you have different TED, TED conferences all around the world. But these have lots and lots of great videos, um, great for teaching and for interacting with the students um, to really get people excited about all different things. There's a massive amount of stuff just on education alone. So that's TED. Uh, and of course there's the some graduation videos. Now a learning object is a collection of content items, um, uh, practice, assessment, combined to be a single learning objective. Now you really want to make sure it's got the content, you've got e-learning activities and the elements of the context. So for example if you're going to run a, a unit plan and you were looking at uh, atoms then you would want a e-learning uh, e identification thing or a learning object that covers the content about atoms a learning activity so students can participate and a reason for putting that in the class. Now I'm just going to bring this one up. So Scoodle is one that we're going to, I'm going to suggest that you get on. So this is Scoodle. To get onto Scoodle, the easiest way, I apologize because I'm clicking around a bit. Um, easiest way is to use, is to go onto this one here, which I've got in the link below in the video, or you can go tinyurl.com you scoodle so it's university scoodle if you type that in it will bring you up with a login create a new account once you've got a new account then you can get to all the details and all the, and unpack it all 
But for now, let's just try Atom, or Atoms, and it will search you all the different things. Now, originally, the Learning Federation objects were to a governor initiative. Um, this was now being taken over as uh, to be Scootle now, and I'm just going to change this to be, I just want learning objects, and go Submit, and let's have a look at this Explore Atoms. Right, looks pretty good. It's got the key learning objectives, the strands, the skills, whatever. Let's view it. And here we have it. So it's got some information. Let's go to the Atom Builder. So look at atomic structure. Now I can have a look. These are all the different types of atom models. Uh, let's skip all that and go straight to the builder. Now I'm gonna, let's see if I can build an atom. Uh, one proton, one electron. You've made hydrogen, yay. Okay, what about if I add in two of these and two of these? Submit, no, some nearby neutrons, chuck a couple of neutrons in, submit, oh, you've made helium, and so on. And eventually you can work out all the different. So the kids are actually playing around with protons, neutrons, electrons, and having a look. So it's, it's constructive play. Uh, Merlo.org and SDO and School are three other websites which you can find information on. School is probably the best one for Australia. Now, gamification is a different type of concept. Gamification is uh, the idea of applying game design thinking to non-game applications to make them fun and engaging. Now, we use gamification all the time in classes. In other words, you're getting students to participate in, um, in activities that will be interesting, for the, interesting, engaging, fun, and the students learn. Now, this could actually be called learning by ambush. Um, using technology now to do it is kind of taking it to the next level. Now, if, this is one of the few times where I'm, when I've suggested you read something. This is a really good uh, uh, paper on why bother with gamification. And it's, it's, it identifies what it is, how it can be used great, uh, and so on. Uh, so the link's there. Uh, one of the greatest gamification guys in the world is Yuka Chow, and he has, even his website is at gamification, and these are his top 10 uh, gamification uh, programs, courses, websites, whatever. Uh, so Duolingo is a one, it's an app you can get on your phone, and it can teach you how to learn languages, lots and lots of different languages. I've got a friend of mine who's already learned three languages just from using Duolingo. Now, I'm not saying he's fluent, but he's, he understands and he speaks it quite coherently. Ribbon here is uh, designed by Microsoft Office when they first brought out the ribbon, so it's a bit old now, but the ribbon across the top uh, in Microsoft Word and it teaches students how to use it. Class Dojo tracks classroom, classroom behavior, so students are doing better, they do better um, in, with their behavior, they go up in the class, so they go worse, the dojo goes down. Goal book is tracks the student's progress. World Peace Game is a political simulation and students have to take on the role of the government and, and compete with other students and make sure they're coming up with world peace. Coursera is a whole suite of online courses. Uh, it's also called a MOOC, um, but Coursera is a bit more gamified. Mr. Pi's uh, class is for year three students and it's all about learning games. Course Hero is all, all problem sets. Brainscape is a way of teaching you how to study better. And Socrative, we have actually covered it in a previous course, um, but you can use it in classes too as a gamification tool. I'm going to give you an example of gamification in the real world. You can see here, uh, this is a doctor or a surgeon who's using a robotics tool um, to operate. Now, he's working in a booth. The actual machine is over here with the patient, so he has no hands on the patients. It's completely robotics. To train and use this machine, the, student, the doctors have to rack up hundreds of hours of experience before they can practice on a real person. Now, over in Europe, there are entire warehouses of these machines, where the, and on each one is a different activity they want the doctors to do under microscopic scales, or maybe not quite that small, but very small scales. So it may be stacking balls or, um, or rings or moving piles from one side to the other. And the doctors, when they come in, apparently, find it really, really interesting. They do it for the first day, and most of them struggle to come back because you, if there's only so many times you can stack a pile of rings that it gets bored. So it's also a huge amount of cost to design the, these giant machines for the doctors to use. So one thing that the, a company's done called Serious Games has used these machines and put in some Wii controllers and converted them 
into a way that they can get some excitement. So here you can see, this is a game, and I can see a, one line coming in here, another line coming in here. That's my arms, and they're used, run by a Wii controller. And here I have these little uh, alien dudes or miners, and they're harvesting these blue pebbles or blue energy balls. And you have to pick them up. So if you see this guy's about to pick up this book, this guy, and you can move them, you can move them around. So you're practicing your, with your tools. You can break rocks. You can, do, so you, but you're, you're using the tools in a way that's going to train you of how to do it uh, online. And because it's on a Wii, the, it, there's no real huge con, uh, thing that you have to do. Um, you don't need a massive uh, robot. You can do it just on your Wii control at home, and you're practicing. Um, so here you can see them picking up, so using the tools, and they're getting comfortable with it. Um, and they found that the surgeons that are practicing with this uh, are coming up much, much better than the people who are just doing small things. Because it's under uh, um, well, game conditions, so it has to do an untimely and so on. Okay. Now, Classcraft. This is a class-based uh, learning game which was only recently set up uh, by, a, by this teacher here, who he's, and he's designed all the program to run it. Now, he's overlaying the class craft uh, ac across his school, or across his physics class. So in other words, the students are doing their normal physics activities, but they're getting points. And as they're continuing on, they're leveling up their characters. So the characters uh, each have different abilities and apparently they get real world uh, bonuses and, and achievements by uh, doing better in class. Uh, they may be, that may be real advantages like uh, they can eat in class or they can uh, have extra time in exams or bring notes into exams or if they're doing poorly then they may have penalties like have to hand things up quicker or ha even have a detention if worse comes to worse. So it's using the class, the game mentality uh, within a classroom. Okay, so I've kept it pretty short this week. The reason being that I want you to have a go on Scoodle to, and really identify games or activities that will be useful for you in your class. Discussion board this week, Google's no longer ubiquitous. In other words, it's tailored, and it's tailored to the user. Um, now, this is a fun activity. I want you to go onto Google, look up learning objects in your browser, go down to the fifth item on Google and just paste that straight in. Um, if you're at uni, uh, work on a university computer, you'll probably find it's going to be something about Brisbane education or something. However, depending on where you are in the world or what you're doing, it may come up weird. And the strange thing is that Google's, Google's forcing you to uh, tailor what you're learning or what you're researching. Second one is choose one of the websites and identify one learning object and how to use it in the classroom. Now, for me, I'm suggesting you use Scoodle just to practice. And the last one is gamification is not a new concept. Um, we use games all the time. What I want you to do is come up, what games might you play in the class from learning by competition? And you don't have to use ICT for this one. I want you just to think of games. Maybe you want to play Monopoly to understand the roles of economics. But come up with your own idea. Now, it, can be, it can be ICT if you wish. Once again, we're covering different national professional standards. We're going to have a two, three, and six, but I want you to look at standard six this week, just to make it easier. Uh, it's going to be a short one. So we've kept this quite short this week, and well done.